Hi, it's Nell, and today I am going to be pruning and propagating my silver satin pothos, so stick around for that. So if you like videos about gardening, both indoors and out, be sure to subscribe. I would like to have you come back for more. Actually, I'd love to have you come back for more, and there are plenty of videos in the archives for you to peruse, and I do a blog post to go along with every video, so be sure to check that out at joyousgarden.com. So the silver satin pothos is a plant which has really gained in popularity. It also goes by satin pothos, silver pothos. I learned it as silver satin pothos. It's not technically the same genus as pothos. This is a shindapsis but it's still called a pothos because it is in the same family. It's in the Araceae family, and it has that same similar growth habit that a pothos has. So mine is getting a little thin on the top. You can see how long it's getting. I'm gonna be repotting it very soon too, so stay tuned for that. And it's just gotten long and crazy, and I, I want it to fill out a bit more and then after I transplant it into a six inch pot I am going to plant these rooted cuttings back in with the mother plant. So the ideal times to do the pruning on a house plant are spring, summer, into early fall if you're in a warmer climate like me. That's when I do my pruning anyway. It is now the end of August, still very warm here in Tucson so it is ideal and the first thing to do is to make sure that your pruners are clean and sharp I'm using my Fisk or floral nips I've had these for a very long time they don't even oh yeah they do clasp <laughs> they do clasp but this is great for these thinner stems for pruning on if thinner stems if it's a thicker stem I will use my Felco's Okay, so I just cleaned and sharpened these yesterday. And this one I already pruned and propagated because it was the longest one or I have the stem cutting in water. I will show you that very soon. So I'm going to put that one over there. And if I need to take another cut on it after it is repotted, I will do that. So this one I am going to cut right about here. And you cut it right below this leaf node here, really tight. So you just make a nice, clean cut. And I kind of stagger it a little bit. I was going to cut it here, but there's space. There's no leaf there. So I think I'll cut this one right here. And then that's all I need to cut on this. Um, I am going to, because this has a lot, it's lost a lot of foliage here. I'm gonna tip prune this here. I'm just gonna take off the new growth and that's gonna to help to fill this in a little bit. And where is it here? I'll do it here and you know, I'll take off a little more there. Because I just, I just want this plant to get a little better form. I'm gonna leave that one, I think. Just because, just because. But I am gonna take off a little more here just because that one is so scrawny. Okay, now on to the water portion. And I like to do the propagating in water. You can also do this in a mix, a very light, either a succulent and cactus mix or a very light potting soil mix. You can put the cuttings into there, but I like to do my rooting in you know, water because that way I can see the action. So this one I took about a week and a half ago and the nodes are, the bottom nodes are in the water. They, the roots haven't started to emerge yet, but they will soon. So what I'm actually gonna do is cut this down a little bit. I'm gonna cut it to like here and get rid of that. And then, because I don't want to, um, but these are really almost fragile, so I don't wanna tear the leaf off because I could tear the stem too, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cut it close, right there and there, and get that off. 
And that's about it. And with these, I don't let them heal off like, you know, succulents and cactus. I just, you know, put them in because the stems are fairly, fairly thin. And that node is in the, in the water, you know, which is what I want. And I'm going to cut this one right here. And then I'm going to cut off a couple of the bottom leaves. And that is all you do to propagate. And this video is not going to post for three or four weeks. So I'm just going to wait a bit till these root. And then I'm going to plant them back into the mother plant, which will be into a six inch pot. So you can see the root action on these and you can see me planting them back in and how the plant looks. So I'll catch you on this video in a few weeks. It's been about four weeks and the satin pothos cuttings are are rooted really well so now it's time to plant them back into the mother plant and you can see here how the roots are formed i'm going to take it out of the water i freshen the water every week so that is they are well along so now i'm going to plant them back into here and i'm going to plant them like right around here because this sits on a table so it doesn't trail really on both sides. I just want to fill out a little bit here and here. So that is what I am going to do now. And I just have put a hole in here with this handy dandy little trowel. I love this. And you just get it in as best you can. Let's see. Just kind of coaxed it down in there a bit. Get the roots going down. Young, don't worry if some of them are up a little bit. They'll find their way down. And, that sh and then just cover it over. And that is all you do. And that'll grow into there in no time. Going to do, do the second one here. And I'm getting the last one in here. This is why I don't like to let the stems get too developed because, or too big because then they're hard to get back in the mother plant. It's a different story if you're planting them in a new pot. It's much easier, but getting them back in with the mother plant. Uh, this plant was just repotted just about four weeks ago too, so the soil is nice and loose, so the cuttings are really easy to get in, unlike if it's a established plant that's really the soil is hard but this is easy okay and the soil is nice and moist i watered it yesterday so that it would be nice and moist for the cutting so i'm just going to let them settle in i'm going to put it back in its spot on the table in the dining room and these can root on in and i'll probably adjust them a little bit so they're growing this way not back here because that faces the back of the table and there's a little bit of new growth, you know, coming up here from doing the pruning. So uh, this will really start to grow n n next spring. So it is a few days before I post this, you know, video. And it's been about three weeks since I planted the cuttings. So I just wanted to show it to you. But these are the cuttings here, these three. And I tipped off the very and to get the new growth off because I want some more filling out up here. But I did do some pruning as you know here so it is looking good up on the top there and uh, come early spring, late winter, early spring, we get warm here in Tucson early so it'll really um, do some nice filling out and uh, grow, grow like it normally does. It grows with a moderate rate here, they can grow slower in low light, but this one here in Tucson, I would call a moderate grower. Definitely not fast like the pothos are. So there will be more information in the blog post along with you know pictures with the step-by-step -step so you can get more there in case you're interested in you know propagating this really cool plant. So I hope you have found this to be helpful. I'm gonna be doing a care video on this 
either in a couple months or in the spring, so stay tuned for those. I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes. I really appreciate them. And now let's get into our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. As always, I thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.